Hello, our friends that live within the internet. My name is John, and in this video, I will be showing you some cool stuff with serverless functions and a Netlify. Yes, we are continuing on our Jamstack highway. So this is about episode eight in the series of my Jamstack series. If you missed the previous episodes, you may want to go back and have a look at it. If you're just looking at how to create serverless functions in Netlify, this will have you covered. So what I'm gonna teach you in this episode is how to create a serverless function, how to test it locally, which is really important. Another thing which I found really hard to come by is how to read some data from a JSON file and return that from an API. So if you're doing something like a job interview, this one's pretty useful. And then what we'll be doing is updating our base sample site to use our API. It's all gonna take hopefully 10 minutes so it's gonna be super cool, super interesting, hopefully. Now, if you haven't come across one of my videos before, my name is John and I do weekly YouTube videos on web development, productivity, and all that sort of good stuff. So if you haven't already and you want to be an absolute legend, then please hit that subscribe button because I would very much appreciate that. Now, assuming you've done that, let's crack on and build us some serverless functions. If you are just starting out on your journey with Netlify serverless functions, my number one tip to you is figuring out how you can debug things locally first. Now, when I started learning this, I didn't, I charged on, and I wasted loads and loads and loads of time. Now, we all know our classic development life cycle, where we develop, we deploy, we debug, and round and round and round we go until our application has been built. Now, if you just rely on Netlify to test your functions, you're going to be very inefficient. So what's going to be happening is you're going to be pushing your code, you're going to be looking at the Netlify build, you're going to be watching your watch, you're going to be watching some paint dry, you're going to be looking at the build logs. Basically, you're going to be so inefficient and it's really annoying. So what we want to do is install some packages to allow us to test our function locally, just like it was being hosted in the Netlify. So luckily, this is going to be super simple for us. As you can see, I've got my terminal open and I'm just gonna do an npm install Netlify LM da. And off it goes installing. Now, while it's doing this, for those of you new to this video in this series, you might be wondering why I'm actually running this command. Basically, I'm running it within our next JS application. So this is the series website that I've been building, available from my GitHub below. But basically, it's a next JS application hosted in Netlify. I'm using Contentful as the headless CMS. This is a Jamstack powered website, so it's all statically generated. So this is what we're doing today. Now, as you can see, my package has installed successfully. So what we're going to do now is go over to package.json. In here, we're going to create ourselves a new function. So it's going to be called a start API. So start dash API. And in here, we're just going to do a Netlify. We're going to do a LM and da. We're going to do a serve. And this is going to be serving the functions folder. And this is basically telling this next um, Netlify debugging tool that this is where it needs to look to find our serverless functions. Beautiful. Now, if you try to run this start API on its own, you're going to be in for some trouble because we need to put in a command within our Netlify toml. Now, if you've forgotten, Netlify toml is how we configure Netlify. And what we basically need to do is tell Netlify to publish our functions folder into a different directory. So what we're going to do in here is just do functions and we're going to call this dist-functions. Simple. So this might be a bit confusing. So we're going to be creating a folder within our project called functions and this is where we're going to put our code. However, to stop like Netlify getting confused, we need to define a different output folder when it builds things that gets published eventually into Netlify. So in Netlify, this is going to be called dist-functions. So the next thing we can do is start creating our serverless function. So in our application, we just type in functions. Remember, it needs to map into our command. And in here, we're gonna create ourselves a new file. Now, the name of the file will be the name of the API in a Netlify. So I'm gonna call mine data API. And this is basically gonna be the URL I'm going to access my API with. So data API. Now in here, we need to do an exports with an S, that's important. And we want to do a handler. Then we want to do an equal. It needs to be an async function. Then we need to do an arrow function. And we're going to return some simple text. So what we're going to do is return. We're going to do body. We're going to do the body equals test. Then we're just going to simply return a status code. 
and that status code is going to equal 200. And I spelt that wrong. So go do status code. Perfect. So if we move this up, now we should be able to do an npm run start API. Hope you can see that. You can't. So all I'm doing is typing in npm run start dash API. And off we go. Now, if everything goes right, we should see a nice little error. As you can see, I've got an unexpected token. So what I want to do is close this down. Yes, please. Clear. Let's go back to our function. And it's probably because I need to do this instead. Because I'm a Wally. So we've got body. We've got status code. We'll go again. N, P, and M. Beautiful. You can see it this time. Run. Start. API and off he goes and as you can see the server starting and what you'll see is we can see that the lambda server is listing on localhost 9000 and you can also see we've got this data API as our entry point so let's have a look how this looks like within Chrome We are now looking at our API within Chrome, and as you can see, a test is being pushed out in the body as expected. So just to double check, you know, I've gone to localhost 9000 slash data API. Now, while I was switching to Chrome, I actually pushed my code into Netlify. So I just did a git add, git commit amend, or git commit dash m dash server functions, and then a git push origin master. Now, if I look in Netlify, you can see that we've got our next boilerplate HTML site. And as you can see, my server functions has published. So what we want to do now is go over to the functions folder. As you can see at the top here, we can click on functions and you can see that data API has been pushed. Now, all we need to do is click on data API and you can see that we've now got this endpoint. So if I do this little copy button, what we can do is paste that in. And as you can see, we've now got our test. So anyone in the world who goes to our next boilerplate dash HTML, which is the name of my Netlify app, goes to dot Netlify, as you can see right here, and then slash functions, and then slash your endpoint name. This is basically your serverless function to the world. So as you can see, creating a function debugging it locally and pushing it, super simple. So the next thing we're gonna do is add some JSON data and render that out in our API as well. So let's go back to Visual Studio Code and crack on with that. We are now back inside the beauty that is VS Code. I'm gonna crack on returning some JSON that we're gonna read from a file on the server. Now the reason why I'm doing this is because it took me ages to figure it out. And because Netlify uses serverless functions and because the functions directory is served somewhere different when you publish it, this really confused me. Now, what we're gonna do is create a file called data.json. So data.json. In here, you can put any JSON you want. So I'm just gonna put a simple thing like name, uh, John, and surname equals Jones. Now, as I said, this can be anything you want. I've come across these in job interviews before where people said, create yourself a serverless function using this JSON, and it is a pain to figure it out. So back in our data API, what we wanna do is import it. Now, you might think you can use path and reference it locally and relatively. You cannot do this. You can't use FS to try and read it from the file system. Don't try and do that. What you need to do is reference it, it directly and what will happen is that when Netlify is building it will make sure that the file will get copied to the function folder now if you don't do this when Netlify starts copying things you'll, it you won't know where the file is and if you try and use you know it said path it will not work so what you want to do is a const we we'll call our data and what we want to do is a require which is a node thing and then we just want to do a relative which is a dot slash data dot json so now that we have our data, another thing that we should probably do is allow cause, because if you don't allow cause, things are a pain. Now, as you can see, I've got my headers thing here. What we want to do is say that our content type is application JSON, and we also want to allow the access control allow origin. So access dash control dash allow dash origin to equal a star. And this is gonna allow our cause. So this means that say, if we want to get our application talking to our headless API, then it's gonna work and it's gonna be fine and you won't get any issues. 
obviously this is a bit of a security loophole but this is just development so we don't care so now what we're going to do within our body we're just instead of returning a test we're going to do a json dot stringify and then we're going to pass in our data so that's going to create our json for us and then also we're just going to pass in our headers so we can just do headers we could just do it on its own but let's just be clear here headers headers and that's all we need to do so next we're going to open up our terminal we're then again just going to do an npm run start api we're also going to push this into netlify and see what happens so we are back in our chrome if i do a refresh as you can see we're now outputting that data that we've read from a file and we're returning json instead of text now so to finally wrap this up what we're going to do is update our next JS application. We're going to create a new page, which then is going to use the fetch API to read this API and render it onto our next JS application. We are back inside our next JS application and it's time to create itself a brand new page. We're going to call it profile and it's going to render out our serverless function data. Amazing, right? So if you remember in Next.js to create a new page, we create a file within the pages directory. So we're just going to call something called profile. And remember Next.js will do all the routing for us so we don't have to do anything complicated. So we're just going to create a new component, call it profile. It's going to be a functional component. And then before I forget, I should also do a, a export default profile. I always forget to do that one. Now in here, I am actually going to cheat. So I'm going to return some HTML, which I've copied and pasted from my About Us page. As you can see, I just got a hero and a container class with some text. Now, as we need to call an API and we need to do this and we're using Jamstack and the site's going to be statically generated, we need to use the get static props function. So we're just going to do export async function and then we're going to do get static Now in here, we're going to use the fetch API. So we're just going to do a const. We're going to do a result. And then that's just going to be an await fetch. And then I'm going to copy the URL. So if we go back to our Chrome, hopefully it should be this one here. If you can see it. We can then copy our URL, which is next boilerplate html.netlify.app.netlify slash functions slash data API, a bit of a mouthful, but as you can see, copy and paste, put it in our fetch API right there. Now we want to do a const results. And then this is just going to be a await res.json like that. Let's do a console.log on that just in case I made a mistake. And then also remember we need to return props. So we're just going to do return. Then we're going to do a props. This is, needs to be an object. And I'm just going to do a name, which is going to be a result.name. So remember we were outputting that from our JSON file. Now in our profile code at the top here, we now need to pass in our props. So let's just pass the props. And then in here we can just do a props.name. And if everything's going according to plan, things should be looking good. So if I do a new terminal, pop that to the top so you can see what I'm typing. I'm going to do an npm run development and off it goes. So it's going to pop up in localhost 3000. If we go back here, as you can see, I've got my localhost 3000. We've got our profile. And as you can see, we've got hello world John. So as you can see, we've got our API here. It's returning this name called John. We're reading it in from our Next.js application and rendering it out. Amazing! And that concludes the end of another video. Yeah, yeah, hurrah! So I very much appreciate you're still watching at this point. I'm hoping you can see that working with Netlify service functions is super simple, really easy to get going, really powerful. So I recommend you give them a try. So as you can see, we're carrying on learning lawyers about Jamstack. Next episode is going to be all about Contentful and hooking up. I know I keep saying that, but pinky promise I will do it next time. If you haven't already, I recommend you should sign up to my weekly newsletter. The link is below. 
every Sunday I just send out some links of things I think are interesting and give you an update about some of the content I'm publishing. It doesn't cost anything, there's no spam, so I recommend you do that. Again, if you haven't already because you're a numb nuts, please hit that subscribe button because that will make you an absolute legend. And if you want to do me a last favor, click the like button. That will do me a solid because that will trick YouTube into showing my videos to more people. So again, I would very much appreciate that. Anyway, I hope you have found some massive value from this video. I hope you're having an amazing day wherever you might be and happy coding.